Thousands rallied in the heart of London on Saturday to support U.S. protests against police brutality as the British government warned people to stay away because of the threat of the coronavirus. Crowds gathered at Parliament Square and numbers were so high that social distancing could not be maintained. Britain is still under a partial lockdown and mass gatherings, even outdoors, are banned. Britain's Interior Minister Preeti Patel said although she understood the public's desire to protest following the killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis, it was safer for people not to attend. Of course, we do not want to see um, violence. We do not want to see um, the protests get out of hand. And the police are very conscious of that. They will always do the right thing. As I've said, they will engage, they will encourage. Enforcement is the last resort. But also, I would say to the organisers of any events that are taking place across London, but also across the country, because it's not just London. There are many other planned events across the UK, that the organisers speak to the police, engage the police, engage with officers so that they can help to keep the public safe. To tell us more on the protests in UK over the killing of George Floyd is an uncle with British Broadcasting Corporation, Peter Okoche. Thank you, Mr. Okoche, for joining us on the news. Thank you very much for having me. With the protests spreading to the UK, can you tell us what could have motivated the black community to defy the lockdown currently in the country? Well, I guess it's a sense that, um, you know, what's happening in the States is not restricted to the States and um, that some members of the black minority here in the UK also feel some of that racism. Um, a lot of the times here in the UK, it's said that the racism might not be as overt, as open as it is in the United States, but here it's a bit more institutionalized. So it's not a matter of... Um, you know, somebody being outrightly racist to you, to your face, but the fact that maybe you cannot get a job that you want, maybe the police are more likely to stop you um, if you are black than if you are white. And, you know, the treatment that you get from, you know, other people who question your ability to do your job properly simply because of the color of your skin or where exactly it is that you come from. And I think that's one of the things that has motivated people. And don't forget the fact that, that video of George Floyd being killed on the 25th of May, it was so graphic. You know, it touched a lot of people. Um, you know, the, the, being drained out of this man, I, I think that's one thing that has touched a lot of people and has reverberated around the world. Now, looking at the amount of crowd we have in, at the Parliament Square, it's, it's, I see a whole lot of white people, not just the black community now. Now, what does this, what does this say in essence? You know what, right? I mean, when I first saw the video of George Floyd's death, I, I didn't, I mean, you know, as, as horrible as it was, you know, it was one of those things that, well, we've seen this before, maybe not this graphic, but we've heard about this before. And, you know, I mean, nothing is going to happen. But I think the fact that white people are now joining, black people, Hispanics are coming out in the States, you know, Arabs are joining. I mean, I saw pictures from Syria yesterday of people taking a knee to say black lives matter and stop racism. You know, it's across the world now. I mean, in Australia, for instance, today, there was a match, uh, um, uh, a protest that was meant to happen. The government tried to ban it. The uh, court came out and said, no, allow the protest to go on. You know, it's, this is now um, a wave, if you like, people all over the world, black, white, and don't forget, some people say the white people should realize that as long as black people and other minorities get the freedom that they deserve as human beings, white people can never really be free themselves. Now, racism has always been considered a systematic orchestration uh, against a certain race. Now, do you see the death of George Floyd and there's so much protest going on globally as a paradigm shift when it comes to racism across the world? Well, I mean, I, I think calling it a paradigm shift might be a bit too much simply because racism is so entrenched in many countries in the world. It's all right now for all of us to be pointing our fingers at the United States, but it exists almost in every single country in the world, even in Nigeria, where it might not exactly be racism, but then, you know, we talk about tribalism on the African continent. You know, so it exists everywhere. But I think what M George Floyd's death might do is to be the beginning of a paradigm shift, not the exact paradigm shift, but the beginning of a shift, the beginning of an understanding that, 
you know, black people are tired, tired of having freedoms dangled in front of them and being told that, yes, this is also for you, but not being able to actually reach it and touch it. Now, Peter, how symbolic is this action to, to the UK in terms of policing and possible racism? Well, you, you know what? I mean, I, I've really been consuming a lot of news here in the UK over the last week or so. I mean, we talk about today's protests in uh, Parliament Square, thousands of people out there. I've just been watching clips of it on, on TV. Um, but there were also protests um, across the country. There were protests in Manchester, in Liverpool, in Leicester, in Plymouth, in the southwest. You know, and then there were protests here in the country as well on Wednesday. Let's not forget that really poignant um, speech that was given by um, John Adeboyega, known more to your viewers, I guess, as John Boyega uh, of Nigerian Heritage, star of the Star Wars franchise. Uh, you know, he was almost weeping uh, when he was talking. Uh, even today, uh, just outside London in Watford, we saw the heavyweight champion of the world, boxing heavyweight champion Anthony Joshua, give a very moving speech to thousands of people who had attended that uh, protest out there. Here in the UK, the government had advised people not to attend this uh, protest today. Uh, they were complaining about the, uh, the, 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 the pandemic that is still raging across the country and, and saying it would be very dangerous. But people didn't heed that. People still went out, although they advised the protesters to keep relatively safe distances from each other. I mean, looking at the pictures, it was virtually impossible today. But, you know, despite what governments are saying in this country, in Australia, in the United States, people are saying, listen, we've got to seize the iron while it is still hot, and now is that time. And finally, Peter, is this message timely or ill-timed? That is judging from general perception in UK. I think when it comes to racism, the timing is always well-timed. You know, I mean, racism is a scourge, whether we like it or not. You know, racism is a scourge that must be eliminated from society. And any time that anybody comes out to speak out against racism, I think that time is right. Peter Okwuchi, it's been a pleasure having you join us on PLOS TV News on the Hour. Thank you very much for having me.